expected us. Again, Russia would have never done Ukraine, never, in a million years. If, number one, they wouldn't have done it because we had the oil prices low, but they wouldn't have done it even beyond that. You know, oil went up to $100 a barrel. They made a fortune on that. They made a fortune. I had it at $40, and if it stayed at $40, then it would have. There was no reason why it should have gone up. So uh, we wouldn't have had Russia going into Ukraine. We wouldn't have had China drooling over Taiwan. You know, they're drooling over Taiwan. Israel would never, ever have been attacked. It's just all of it. We wouldn't have had inflation. We would have had a great economy. It's, uh, it's incredible what these people have done. It's, a, it's amazing if you have a competent president, if you have the right president. It's amazing what the right president can do. But we did things that nobody believed. We rebuilt our military. We did things. We knocked out ISIS, you know. We beat them. Everybody said, well, it'll take four to five years. I did it in like two months with uh, General Raisin Kane, right? Right, Mike? General Ra what's your name? Kane, sir. What's your real name? Kane, sir. Well, do you have a first name? Yeah, they call me Raisin. I said, wait a minute, your name is Raisin Kane? I love you, General. This is the General I'm finally looking, not Millie and not all these characters from these television people that don't know what the hell they're doing. Under the Trump administration, you were better off, your family was better off, your neighbors were better off. Your communities were better off, and our country was better off. America was stronger, richer, safer, and more confident than ever when you had me behind that beautiful, resolute desk in the Oval Office. The resolute, you know, is a beautiful desk. A beautiful, beautiful desk with incredible history. You know, they give you a choice of seven desks when you go and you're president. You have seven desks. They have these incredible vaults in the White House and in storage areas, and they have different desks. But the Resolute desk to me was so beautiful. It was such a great history. So many great presidents sat behind it, and I chose that. And uh, I'll tell you, your country did really well when I was sitting behind the Resolute desk. You were doing really well. Really well. And we'll do it again. It's no wonder Biden and the far-left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary. They're weaponizing law enforcement for high-level election interference. It's all election interference. The only thing is, so far, I mean, who knows? Does this go on? So far, they've been great for us. In fact, they don't know what's going on. I heard they were going to indict me two more times, six. I think I must have a record. Who the hell got indicted four times? Two more times, and they said to from what? Don't do it! Don't do it! We're going to indict this guy into the White House. Don't do it. Please, please, they're calling. Please don't indict him anymore. But it's true. It's like the craziest thing, because people get it. You know, they see it. You fight an election. They fought my election. They're still fighting 2016. They all fought it. Everybody in the House fought it. All the Democrat senators fought it. They didn't get indicted. They didn't get sent to jail. The boxes. How about the boxes, hoax? Biden has 15 times the number of boxes over 50 years. And he took it, think of it, he took it when he was a senator, he wasn't allowed to do that. He took it when he was a vice president, he wasn't allowed. I have the Presidential Records Act, I'm allowed to do it, I'm allowed. All that stuff is a hoax, it's a big hoax. And they'll let him get away with it. They let him get away with it, but me, they don't wanna let it get, and he has it under his crummy Corvette, you know, he loves that car. I wonder who gave him that car, which country gave him that car? But he has it on the floor of his Corvette, right? The Corvette runs over, you know, papers from China. It's very interesting. Classified information from China. He sends it, he sends it to Chinatown. What's that all about? And then it gets sent from Chinatown all over the place. And then they said, oh, he's been cooperating. He's been wonderful. No, he hasn't been wonderful. What he did was, uh, there's a senator named Dick Durbin. None of you would hear of him. He's pretty, pretty unimportant. But Dick Durbin, a senator, he said, if he took classified information when he was a senator, that's really, really serious. Wow. I can't believe He did! Then Dick Durbin said, oh, really, it's not that bad, you know, when he found out. But uh, no, it's bad stuff. But if I do it, it's like a big deal. If he does it, it's fine. It's, it's just incredible the way we have a two-tier system of government. We're going to have to change it. And remember, you know, they have to be careful because this can boomerang, too. You know, it's like... Uh, we could have done some really terrible things, and it's very bad for our country. They've opened a Pandora's box, which is very, very bad and very dangerous for our country. But all of this is happening. 
because we're beating them badly in the polls. You know, if I wasn't running, or if I was in fifth place, fourth place, like, uh, how about this guy from Arkansas? He's been at zero for a year. Zero. His name is Ada Hutchinson. It's actually Asa, but I call him Ada. Ada Hutchinson. He was the governor of, I don't know, because it's such a great state. Arkansas is a great state. But this guy's been at zero now for about six, seven months. And uh, if he ever cracked one, I'd be shocked. He's got zero going for him. He's a nasty guy, too. He's a real fresh, nasty guy. But uh, what keeps a man like that running? He's at zero. He goes around campaigning. Oh, you see him. Did anybody ever meet him here? Ada Hutchison. Were you impressed? No. <laughs> Who's more impressive, Trump or Ada? I, you tell me. Now, think of it. He said zero. He actually, the other day, he had a zero, and the arrow was pointing left. That means he was at less than zero. You know what they, I figure that is? Less than zero? That's crooked votes. In other words, that's when they actually take away votes. So that would be zero less. That's good. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. In the new morning console poll, which is a big deal, we're trouncing the Republican primary field. Trump is at 66, to sanctimonious at 11. And Haley at 11. You know, they had a poll the other day where Trump was at 71. Think of it. And Haley was moving up a little bit, like two points. I moved up eight points. She moved up two points. And Ron DeSanctimonious went down two points. And the headline was Haley Surges. I, she was at 11. I was at 74. But she went from, she went from 9 to 11. She took over first place by one point, and the headline was Haley Surges. It's unbelievable how bad the press is. And it's dangerous for our country, actually, because the press is supposed to be honest. You know, just like the elections are supposed to be honest. We're also leading big here in Iowa, but uh, again, we don't want to take anything for granted. But we're leading by about 40 points in Iowa, but we just... Uh we just can't take that for granted. I don't, even, I don't even want to tell you how well we're doing. I don't want to tell you. I don't want you to walk out of here saying, you know, he's leading by a lot. Let's not bother to vote. Let's watch on television, darling. In the general election, we're crushing Crooked Joe by historic margins in Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina, Ohio, and Florida. You know, if you win Florida, Ohio, and Iowa, do you know this? There's never been a president that lost the election. Thank you very much, President Trump. They say I lost. If you win, think of it. You're a part of the equation. Historically, lots of elections, right? If you win Florida, Ohio, and Iowa. Now, I won each one in a landslide, okay? So it wasn't even winning. Won plenty of other states, too, that people don't quite know about. But if you win those three, there's never been a president that lost an election except me. Except me. It's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. It's a, it's a terrible thing. And the people of the country know exactly what happened. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it again. We're going to win a third time. And we're going to straighten out the country. We're going to straighten out the country. But it is true. You know, if I... If I didn't run, or if I was like running in third, fourth, fifth place or something, I wouldn't be indicted. They're not going to indict me. They go after the one in first place. You know, they're not stupid. Uh, they go after the first. And uh, a lot of people say, they ask me two questions. First, they say, sir, how do you do it? How do you wake up in the morning and put on your pants? And I say, well... I don't think about it too much. I don't want to think about it. Because if I think about it too much, maybe I won't want to do it. But I love it because we're going to do something for this country that's never been done before. Because this country is finished. If we don't win, if we don't win, and you're going to have a stock market crash if we don't win. The stock market's only going up. Do you ever notice that when we go up in the polls, the stock market goes up? It's only because it's a short time. And the stock market only goes up because they think we're going to win. If we didn't win, I think the stock market would be 19. I think it's going to be 1929 depression if we don't win. So it's uh, not, not recession, depression. It's going to be a 1929 baby. And we can't let that happen. And the second thing is, sir, 
Will they do it again? I've had tough guys, like the toughest guys on Wall Street, you know, very smart, very tough. Uh, they're not strong like a lot of you guys. You guys are much more physically fit. These are not, but they're physically fit mentally, very smart. And uh, a lot of the people in the front row know some of them, smartest guys on Wall Street. Uh, and really, you know, mentally very strong. They say, how do you do it? These people come at you with subpoenas every day. You go before grand juries. You go before you have this big slob in New York asking you to pay $370 million penalty for a perfect loan. You had a perfect loan. It was paid. Everything was perfect. I gave the money because the bank wanted You know, that's what they do. The banks want to loan money. And because my balance sheet is so strong and because my statement, the, we had an expert witness. He said, it's the best financial statement he's ever seen. And then this, this person, and it's only political persecution or pro prosecution. But, but the next question they say, though, is, is, will it happen again? Those two questions, usually in that order, but sometimes, but that's it. And we're not going to let it happen again. You should all stay in those voting booths. You should stay there and watch. And if you see bags of crap coming into the voting areas, you got to stop it. You can't let it happen because these guys are crooked as hell. They know how to cheat and they have no shame. They have no anything. They are crooked as hell. And you can't let it happen because we're not going to have a country. If they take over this country, if they have another four years, I don't know that you're going to get by another 10 months. I mean, you know, 10 months is a long time when you have a grossly incompetent person running something. Uh, you could end up in a world war with this, this idiot. You could end up in a world war because he has no clue what the hell is happening. And his people don't have a clue either. And they're smart. They're vicious. They're smart. They're communists. They're fascists. But they're smart and they're vicious. But they're the ones right. He doesn't have he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. But they run it, and they're, they're bad people. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. And every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists, Indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you. Thank you very much, I appreciate that, but that's true. But never forget, our enemies want to take my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I'm not going to let them do that. Not going to. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you, and I just happen to be standing in their way. I'm in their way. Oh, they would love to get rid of me. They would love to get rid of Trump. Let's get rid of that guy. Do you ever notice where they say, because they're great disinformation people, oh, we really want to run against Trump. You know, because they obviously see you're 60 points up or something. It's like, you know, most people would say, like, when's this... Two very foolish people. When are they getting out? When do they get out? But, you know, they have, they have an ego, too. And they maybe won't get out for a few states. But it looks like we're in very good shape. But just think about it. All of this is going on. All of this. And they always say, we really want to run against Trump. See, it's disinformation. They're the party of misinformation and dis. You know, the difference is a slight difference. I won't bore you with it. But there is a difference. But I use them both. Misinformation, disinformation. So I beat Hillary in a big shock. I did much better against, in those days I called him Sleepy Joe Biden, but I like Crooked Joe. I think it's a more accurate term. Sleepy Joe's good, but Crooked Joe's better. So I took that name off Hillary. You know, I called her Crooked Hillary. Now I call her very beautiful Hillary because she's meaningless. <laughs> so what I do, so what happened, that was a great day for Hillary when I took that name off, Crooked Hillary, right? It was a good name. I didn't know. I, didn't, I never liked it that much, and all of a sudden it grew. You know, sometimes they grow. A lot of people didn't like the name De Sanctimonious. They thought it was too long. I said, I think it's good. That one turned out to be very good. And we have an abbreviation, De Sanctus, because you can't keep saying De Sanctimonious. So if you say it more than once in a paragraph, you go De Sanctus. But I, I will tell you that we have a chance to make our country so great. We have one chance, and if we don't take this chance, this country is doomed. It's doomed. A country can be doomed. Other countries were the talk of the world, and 
And fairly short time later, you look at the Roman Empire, you look at the British Empire, you look at so many different empires, they were not even thinking about doom. And this country's not far away. If they had it for another few years, and honestly, even 11 months, it's just too long. So many bad things can happen. This is far more important a campaign. This is the greatest political movement in the history of our country. Make America Great Again MAGA. You know, I was going to call it CAG. Keep America Great. But our country is not great. This is not a, we're laughed at all over the world. We don't do well in anything. We have people that go, they don't know. You know, they went to Mexico the other day. Now, I told you my Mexico story, but their story is Mexico wants us to pay them five billion dollars. Pay them. They're going to pay them five billion. So Mexico wants five billion dollars to help us on the border. Think of that. They're not going to pay. They would never even ask me for that. They would just hope. They would just hope that I was a nice person. But they want uh, five billion dollars to to work with us on the border, and it's Mexico's fault, and it's other countries' fault, too. But it's really our fault, because we have, we're really led by very stupid people. Together, we'll once again fight for Iowa families and Iowa farmers, just as we did. I got you $28 billion. $28 billion. I get a lot of heat, you know. Hey, it's great to be on a Friday night, right? You don't have to go to work tomorrow. I do. You know what I have to do? I have to make speeches in Iowa tomorrow. I have to go to work. Oh, I could be home in one of those beautiful places. No, but I have to. But, uh, but it is great to be. Is there any better place to be than a Trump rally? And actually, this isn't even a rally. This is a beautiful group of people. But uh, there's, there's really nothing like it. I mean, because there's love. There's love all over the room. Unlike Crooked Joe, who wants to dramatically increase the estate tax or the death tax, I virtually eliminated the unfair death tax. I did eliminate it, essentially, for almost everybody in this room, saving countless family farms and small businesses from destruction. You know, when you died, if you have children, great children that you love, if you don't love your children, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. Don't leave them. Don't give them the money. But if you love your children, if you love your children, who loves their children? Okay. Who doesn't love their children? Oh, she raised her hand. Now, if you don't love your children, don't listen. This is just a waste of words. But if you do, you want to leave the farm, you want to leave the business, you have no estate tax. They used to, if you left the farm, they would almost always go bankrupt because they had to go to a bank, they had to borrow the money. You know, it's a great business, but it's cash intensive, land rich a little bit. We all know that through real estate, right? But farms are great, but they're, you know, it's tough. So you leave the farm to your kids, you love your kids, you say goodbye to your kids, they're great. And then they end up losing the farm over a period of two, three, four years. I ended that. I ended the estate tax, or the death tax, as we call it. I also ended the NAFTA disaster, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the brand new USMCA, the best trade deal ever made, a giant win for Iowa farmers. That was a big win for the Iowa farmers. And you know why we all know it's so good? It's because China, you have to see this. China, by the way, I think maybe my best deal is with China, but I don't talk about it too much because I'm so angry about COVID, but maybe the best deal. But if you look at the USMCA, Mexico and Canada, they're trying to renegotiate the deal. They want to renegotiate that deal so much because we made a much better deal than they did. And they're trying to, you know, for years they took advantage of us with NAFTA. But Mexico and Canada are trying to renegotiate the deal. And I tell the Biden administration, don't do it. Don't do it. We had to suffer with NAFTA. Now you do, and you know that the uh, deal we made, USMCA, Mexico, Canada, it's the greatest trade deal ever made in this country. It's an amazing deal. And they want to change it. Don't change it. Don't let them change it. Talk to your senators. They'll do a lot for you. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had ever gotten even 10 cents from China. And then I gave you, out of all of those billions of dollars, I gave the farmers $28 billion. And it is funny, though, because my people keep saying, don't talk about it, sir. It's demeaning. I said, wait a minute. It's like you're taking advantage. You shouldn't say it to the people of Iowa. Don't say it, sir, because it sounds too contemptuous. I say, listen, 
I got Iowa $28 billion for their farmers. They're never voting against me. They vote against me. You think that, you think that Biden lays awake in his bed, turning and tossing, thinking about how he's going to screw China? I don't think so. They lay awake thinking about how they're going to screw him, but it doesn't work the other way. No, I got you $28 billion, and somehow I'm not overly worried. I'm not overly worried. And I know that sounds a little bit uh, brash, but uh, the farmers appreciate it. I said, do you remember? I said, just stick with me. We're going to make a great deal. And the farmers stuck with me. They never — I'll remember an interview on one of the shows in the morning, and they said to one of the farmers, and, you know, there was a period of time when they really cut us off, and it was a tough negotiation. And this farmer said, uh, no, President Trump's right. We're dying right now, but he's right. He's going to get this thing. Because for 30 years, you were getting — the farmer was really getting hurt in this country. And this farmer said, no, it's very tough, but I'm sticking with President Trump. And very shortly after that, we made a deal that was unbelievable. Fifty billion dollars they had to buy. Then I said, what are they buying now? I asked Sonny Perdue, Secretary of, of uh, Agriculture, who's a good guy, by the way. I said, Sonny, so tell me, how much did they take advantage of the farmers in our country? And he said, comes back two days later, about $28 billion. I said, good, I'm going to give them $28 billion from China. And I gave them checks. A lot of the people in this room got it. And I said, you're going to go two things, buy more land and bigger tractors. Remember my line? I said, buy more land and bigger tractors. And that's what happened, and you're doing great with it. But don't let them change that one either, because that one's up. And as you know, uh, Biden is a — he's a uh, man who is very compromised with China. He's a Manchurian candidate. Does anybody know what a Manchurian candidate is? Because he's — he is a Manchurian candidate. He's paid off by China, so he may do bad things. Just as I promised, I also stood up for Iowa ethanol. I issued a historic rule declaring that E15 would be made available all year round. Nobody thought that would ever be done. And letting them use existing pumps and existing equipment, which saved hundreds of millions of dollars for your state. And Ron DeSantis spent his entire career as a raging opponent of ethanol. He was an opponent. Now all of a sudden I see he, oh, I'm with ethanol. This guy spent every year in Congress trying to kill the farmer. He was against the farmer and he was against ethanol. But he'll destroy ethanol, and I'll protect ethanol for four more years. You'll have total protection in the White House. You know, when a politics — because I know politics for a long time, but always on the other side until the last period of time. But when a politician says something, initially, that's what they always do. So Ron DeSantis was against Social Security. Now he comes out in favor of Social Security. He wanted to cut the hell out of it. That's where his inclination is. Same thing with Nikki. That's where their inclination is. And they always go back after the election. They go back to it. Just like they try and reduce gas prices, and after the election, it goes up like a rocket ship, you know, which is what they're trying to do right now, Biden. Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency, it's going to be us all together. I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. I know them both very well. Zelensky and Putin. I'll get it settled. We will turn — it's a — it's a terrible war. Millions of people are dying. You know, far, it's far worse than — they are not giving you the real numbers. The people — the number of people that are dying is far greater. When those massive buildings come tumbling down, there are a lot of people in those buildings. And then they say, yeah, there were two people hurt. No, there were a lot of people killed. Every time a rocket hits a building, it's terrible. But we'll get it settled quickly. We will turn — the page forever are the days of foolish, never-ending wars that squander American blood and treasure in distant foreign lands. And we will restore peace through strength. We, ha we can do it. We can do it very easily. We don't have to go out and lose our young people and our wealth. And I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you. I will prevent World War III. You are very close to World War III. Very close. Very close. You're very close to World War III, far closer than most of the people in this room would understand. And we will prevent World War III. And this would be a war with uh, nuclear. And uh, I don't even want to tell you about uh, the destructive capability. But this would be obliteration. This is, not, uh, this is not World War II with the army tanks going back and forth shooting at each other. This is obliteration. I will end Biden's inflation nightmare, save our nation from debt and economic despair, and we will immediately drill, baby, drill. Drill, baby, drill. Immediately.
In fact, you know, when you give the speech at the White House, at the Capitol, and you have the stairs going up, the beautiful stairs with the red carpet going up, uh, I'm so anxious to get some of these things signed, like closing up the border, like getting out all the criminals that are coming to our country, like uh, drill baby drill and other things, that I think rather than going back to the Oval Office, which is somewhat of a little track, I'll put a desk about five steps up. It's many steps. And I'll sit down at that desk and I'll sign all of the things that we're talking about tonight so I don't waste a lot of time on day one. And I'll also cancel Crooked Joe Biden's insane ethanol-killing electric vehicle mandate. How crazy is that? Crazy. And don't sell your gas stove, because you'll be using your gas stove for a long time. That's another thing. People that are great cooks say gas is much better than electric, you know? What, what do I know about it? I really wouldn't know. but. They say the gas is much better than electric, and you're not going to uh, be using electric if you don't want to. You're going to have the option. Same thing with cars. They don't go far. They're very expensive, and they can all be made in China, because China has the materials. But we have the materials called gasoline. We have the materials for what we want. And uh, I'm not against the electric cars, but you, if you want a hybrid, you can have it. And if you want, but you can have a lot of choice. And that's the way it has to be to mandate electric. How can you do this? And we don't have enough electric. And you know, electric is produced by fossil fuel. Okay? You know, people don't say that. You know, all that fossil fuel is, is really getting it done. But just as I did before, I will appoint strong, highly qualified, pro-Constitution Supreme Court justices who will interpret the law as written. And I will direct a completely overhauled DOJ to investigate every radical, out-of-control prosecutor in America for their illegal, racist enforcement of the law. And I'm also going to indemnify all police officers and law enforcement officials throughout the United States to protect them from being destroyed by radical left lunatics for taking strong action on crime. We're going to indemnify them because they get sued. And a lot of police departments now, they say you have to protect yourself. You have to go out and hire your own lawyer to protect. Can you believe it? We're going to indemnify them and some of the departments themselves. We're going to rebuild our cities into beacons of hope, safety, and beauty better than they have ever been before. We'll have to work with the Democrats. They're all running these decaying cities. The cities are decaying. They're crime-ridden. They're crime-infested. Every one of them is run by a Democrat. Safety will again be restored so that children can go outside and play in the park without being beat up, molested, or shot. And we're also going to federalize Washington, D.C. It's become hell on earth. Three people were killed last night. People are being shot every day in Washington, D.C. Graffiti all over the beautiful white marble columns. Slum areas that are so bad you can't walk through them. But you can't even walk through the best areas without being molested or shot, beat up by thugs. We're going to take over Washington, D.C., and we're going to make it great again. We're going to make it beautiful and safe. We're also going to fight to give you much better health care than Obamacare, which is a, a disaster. You know that because it's so expensive. It's out of control. It's out of control. And I'm not saying anything about Obama. If, if maybe we'll make it better. Maybe we'll change it. But you're going to have much better health care at a much lower price. And you don't have that now. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. And I will not give one penny to any school that has a vaccine mandate or a mask mandate. And I will keep men out of women's sports. Can you believe we even have to say that? Can you believe we even have to say that? Did you hear now they want a box against men? They want a box. I know something about that. They want a box. Uh, they don't want to. I think the men probably don't mind it, actually. 
But they want to box now. How stupid, how crazy. Do you even have to say this? So many of the things that you're saying today, if you ever said them 10 years ago, they say, why do they even say that? Like, I will give you back your parental rights. Of course you have your parental rights. They took away your parental rights. They're giving them to school boards. I will fully uphold the Second Amendment, which I've done better than anybody. And we will protect innocent life, and we will restore free speech. And almost the most important, I will secure our elections. Our goal will be one day voting with paper ballots and voter ID, right? But until then, Republicans must win. And I will say that Republican governors should switch to paper right now. I don't know why they're not, you know. They should switch to Republicans. They control the state. And if they do have that kind of control, they ought to switch over. Many states that have really good control, they ought to switch over to paper ballots. It's all watermarked now. It's really incredible stuff, what you can do with paper. Paper is actually high-tech. But paper, you can switch over to it. Voter ID, you want. Why wouldn't they want voter ID? You know, the Democrats fight you on voter ID. You know why? Because they want to cheat. They don't want to have voter ID. Everything has voter. Everything has an identification. Even the Democrat National Convention, when you walked into that, the last convention they had, they had a sign. It was like a painting on the front. It had your picture from four different angles. It had everything about you. And that was for their convention. But for voting, they don't want you to have any identification whatsoever. It's only for, very simply, they want to cheat. They cheat like nobody has ever cheated before. So if you want to save America from crooked Joe Biden, then get every patriot you know, make sure they're registered Republicans, you can get them out to vote in their local precinct caucus at 7 p.m. Monday, January 15th, and I'm going to be here for doing that. I'm going to be in Iowa. And remember, you're first in the nation because I kept you first in the nation. I kept you there. Nobody else, no other politician, I kept you there. I know the governor I called, and uh, I said, when are you endorsing me? Well, sir, I'd rather remain neutral. And I said, uh, well, when you called me a number of years ago, I endorsed you and I got you elected. I even moved Terry Branstead to China. Right? I moved him to China, your governor. He was, uh, he did a very good job. He did a very good job. Well, sir, I'd rather remain uh, neutral. I said, well, I would have rather remained neutral, too, but I didn't. I got you elected, so it's a whole thing. But uh, we got you uh, first in the nation, and that's a big deal, and we love it. And, you know, you're a great, uh, a great political state, in a sense. That when I hear Iowa, I think of farmers and I think of politics, and so we're going to keep it that way. You have a great tradition here. They wanted to move you to the back of the pack. Look, the Democrats left. They left, which I think was foolish. There was no reason for it, but they left. And uh, you're, you're first in the nation because of me. And I'm going to keep you there, too. I'll keep you there. The whole world is watching, so learn how to caucus and find your caucus location, which is often different than where you're normally, or when you normally vote. It's a little bit different. It's ia.donaldjtrump.com. So remember that. Go just caucus and bring people and just make sure we win big because that's going to set the table for November. So in conclusion, from Fort Dodge to Cedar Rapids, from Des Moines to Davenport, from Sioux City to Iowa City to right here in Mason City, we stand on the shoulders of generations of Iowa patriots who tamed the wilderness, braved the elements, tilled the soil, worked the fields, built the factories, and poured out their blood, sweat, and tears to make this country into the greatest nation in the history of the world. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a nation in very, very serious decline. We're a failing nation. We're a nation that has lost its confidence, its willpower, and its strength. Think how horrible that sounds. We're a nation that's lost its confidence. We are. We have lost its confidence because we have horrible leaders that shouldn't be the leaders. We're a nation that has lost its way, but we are not going to allow this horror to continue. Three years ago, we were a great nation, and we will soon be a great nation again. It was hardworking patriots, and that's what you are. You're incredible patriots like you who built this country, and it's hardworking patriots like you 
who are going to save our country. We will fight for America like no one has ever fought before. 2024 is our final battle. It's our final battle. Got to do it. And remember, this is the greatest movement in the history of our country. You know, you've had people come along and they did well in one primary, or they might have won a primary unexpectedly, or uh, Pat Buchanan, I think about him, he did well in Iowa. I think he came in second, and he made a career of being a great political pundit because of that. I mean, we won, last time we won 50 states, right? Last time we did numbers that nobody's ever done, the largest number of votes in the history of our country. Uh, bad things happen, really bad things. We can't let that happen again. But we got more votes than any sitting president by far in the history of our country. And in 2016, some people thought it was a surprise. I didn't think it was a surprise because we had rallies that were so massive. But we have bigger rallies now than we did then. We have bigger rallies now than we had in 2020. And they were big. They were big. And, uh, you know, we did incredible. But we're going to do better this time. We're going to do so good. But we're going to be watching. You know, it's called secure the ballot. We have to secure. We have all the votes we need. We have to secure the ballot. And with you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. We will, we're going to get them out of our government. They are not good. Look, there'll be a time, maybe there'll be a time, but uh, there's no reason for it. You can get things settled and a lot better. And Ukraine's an example. That could have been settled so easy. I would have had that done in 24 hours. That could have been settled so easy. All those dead people, all those buildings that are gone, those cities that are gone, 2,000 years old, domes that are 1,500 years old, you can't replace them. But so many people have died, we could have solved that. Israel would have never been attacked, ever. Not even a chance of that horror show. What they did in Israel was a horror thing, a horrible thing. All the people dead, and from both sides. Now you look at what's happening the other way. From both sides, we would have never had that. We'll get that settled and solved, too. Somehow we'll get it solved. But we'll drive out the globalists, we'll cast out the communists, Marxists, and fascists, we'll throw off the sick political class that hates our country. They hate our country. We'll rout the fake news media and we will evict crooked Joe Biden from the White House on election night 2024. We have to get him out of there. He's bad. He's a bad guy, bad person. The great silent majority is rising like never before and under our leadership, the forgotten men and women will be forgotten no longer. We're not going to be, we're not going to be forgetting the men and women of this country. We will love our country. We will take care of our country. We will pray to God for our strength and for our liberty. We will pray for God and we will pray with God. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Iowa. Get out there. We love you. God bless you all. God bless you.